Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost here, and today we're going to talk about getting into trials, what that means, what it takes, and when you're ready. And just in case you're wondering what a trial is, a trial in Elder Scrolls Online is the raid content. It's the large group content. In Elder Scrolls Online, that means 12 person groups. They usually consist of one or two tanks eight damage dealers, and then a couple of healers. So you've got about two tanks, eight damage dealers, two healers for a total of 12 players. Depending on the trial, you may have more or less of each of these roles, uh, depending what's needed, but that's going to be more or less the shape of every trial group that you're in. Some of the strongest gear in the game comes from trials, but not all of it. Trial gear is not automatically better than non-trial gear, but sometimes trial gear is the best in slot option for certain situations. For instance, Relican and Sororia have been amazing parsing sets for situations when you're able to parse on a single target for a long time. A lot of players spend a lot of time wondering when they should go ahead and try to jump into a trial. Are they ready yet? Are they high enough level? Do they have the gear that they need? So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and cover what you should have before jumping into a trial and help you understand when you're probably ready to do so. And these come from trials. The answer is a lot simpler than you might think, and you're probably already ready. But let's go ahead and find out. Let's jump through the list of things, starting with the first one. What is the minimum level you should be to jump into trials? Well, that answer is a lot more complicated now as of Markarth. So as of Markarth, they added this thing called the item set collections, right? So if you look in this tab here in the top right, you've got sets in your collections tab. And here it shows you every set piece that you've ever found and bound to your character, either by deconstructing it, selling it or equipping it. As long as you didn't trade it away to another player, it ended up in here. So what does that mean? It means you can craft it now and you can craft it in any level that you want. Because of this, you no longer have to be 160 before you start farming your best in slot gear, because what you can do now is go ahead and find the gear before 160 and reconstruct it. When you hit 160, you already have it all collected. You start reconstructing it and boom you're ready to equip all of your best in slot gear. So you can start farming sets like Mother Sorrow and Overland set before you hit 160. You can farm dungeon sets before you hit 160. You don't have to wait until 160 to start acquiring your gear that you want to wear anymore. You just have to wait until you hit 160 to reconstruct it here at a transmutation station. So if you interact with the transmutation station and you click reconstruct, you get a similar menu. It shows you all the gear that you have. And right here we see all of the pieces of Mother Sorrow that I have, and I could reconstruct any one of these i can create it in gold i can pick the traits let's say i wanted precise and there it is a gold mother sorrow 160 staff in precise it's perfect it's everything i ever wanted and then i could craft this if i wanted to right you do have to have the materials still to craft the item however this one addition to the game has changed the way we look at farming gear as a new player because you can start now you could start early you could run around that zone and collect pieces of it from time to time and for the same reason this is kind of complicated the answer as to when are you allowed to jump into trials to farm your gear it used to be that we didn't have this ability to find trial sets like right now, we look at the trial sets and we look at Cloud Rest, very popular trial to run. Players are running normal Cloud Rest to acquire their Relican or to acquire their Sororia. And it used to be that if you were below 160, every piece of gear you found was useless to everybody else in the group. So they didn't want to bring you at sub 160 because you couldn't trade them anything that was of value to them. You'd just basically be relying on them to trade you something useful. And all of your drops were going to be complete garbage. Well, that's no longer the case because you could give them a a CP45 item, they can add it to their collection and then they can craft it at 160. And they most likely would have had to craft it anyway because it's not going to drop into vines very often, which is probably what they were looking for, right? So it makes no difference to them now if you're CP45 or if you're CP175, they're just going to add it to their collection and craft it in the right trait anyway. And so because of this, the answer is less clear than it used to be. It used to be a hard, you got to be 160. Otherwise, the gear you find isn't useful for them and it's certainly not going to be useful for you when you level up. Now, now, you could theoretically go in there before 160. Um, should you? Will you be carrying your weight? That's another question. You know, it's that's also complicated because normal trials are so easy and almost every group that goes into a normal trial, regardless of its composition, that group is going to be overqualified. They're going to steamroll through the content. It's not hard for players anymore. There are so many players that are so overqualified and they just need to find another couple pieces of a set or they're just changing their build up. And so they're going back to this normal content that they are way overqualified 
qualified for. And they can easily afford to bring a few people that are not quite ready for the content, right? They'll have no problem carrying you through. And so they might take you anyway. So for that reason, you could technically go in at any level. If you want to make sure that you're contributing to the cause, you're carrying your own weight, then feel free to wait until like 160 or whenever you have at least maybe two five piece sets on. And if you can swing it, a monster set would be great too. Then you're definitely going to be carrying your weight. You're going to be pulling your own right and the group's gonna be happy to have you so let's talk about the gear so as far as gear goes if you have two five piece sets on and a monster set on you're gonna be great you're gonna be ready to go and it can be crafted set like hundings or diamond victory these are all very good sets they're very strong especially diamonds victory right now you'll be more than carrying your weight in the content so gear wise if you've got your sets you're ready to go don't feel scared don't feel like you shouldn't be signing up because you're only 160 the fact that you have the gear means that your character is probably more than ready for a normal trial and remember all of the gear you find in the trial that you need you know you can add it to your collection and then you'll be able to craft it in the right trait later because it most likely won't drop in the right trait so make sure that you're continuously doing random normal dungeons on your way up to 160 on your way to get ready to do trials because you're going to need see how there's a transmute cost next to each of one of these trial sets that i'm crafting 48 transmutes per piece for my perfected and 32 transmutes per piece for my uh, not perfected here and you get 10 transmutes per random daily dungeon uh, you can do one random daily dungeon per character so if you have five characters you could get 50 transmutes per day that's one piece of gear or so per day right if you don't have very many pieces of the set or if you only have one character you're brand new to the game you know that's why it's important to be consistent about doing those because over the course of a month you can accrue 300 transmutes that's enough to get you a full set of trial gear crafted now let's talk about what's most likely your next concern you know like hey my level's probably ready my gear is definitely ready i've got at least a couple five piece sets on you know maybe they're not the greatest sets but i have two five piece sets on so according to lucky i'm ready to go but what about the mechanics i don't have any clue what's going on in there my team's gonna hate me no that's not true either as I mentioned, normal trials are so easy, and this is not to belittle the content, it's just that that's the way it is. Zoss has designed normal trials to be an introduction to trial content. It's a way to let you get your gear and to see what a trial entails without that feeling of soul-crushing defeat over and over again. That's what veteran content is for. So normal content is very much there, it's beginner-friendly, it's very easy. Almost every group that gets together for a normal trial is going to be overqualified, and they're just going to steamroll through it. They're going to basically disregard all of the mechanics because a lot of the times even if you don't follow the mechanics they do so little damage in normal that the group won't wipe anyway there is one exception for this rule however if the tank has no idea what's going on if they're dying over and over it can be hard on the group even in normal you know a normal trial boss is still gonna hit hard enough to start killing players really fast if the tank goes down so if you're the tank you know make sure you let the group know hey i'm new so just let me know what i need to do and i can make sure i have the right things taunted there's nothing wrong with being a new tank we all had to learn at some point so don't be afraid and if you're already tanking like veteran early veteran dungeons you're probably ready for a normal trial anyway so hopefully now i've removed your fear of joining a trial hopefully you don't feel like you're not ready when you probably almost certainly are hopefully you're not scared of going in there and ruining everything from the group because most likely the group's gonna steamroll it right the group's not gonna know how good or bad you are they're going to be too busy deleting everything that's in front of them with very little effort. If you do want to brush up on the mechanics that are most likely going to be ignored, just so you're kind of aware of what's coming and what you're going to see, and so that you're a little less stressed out when you get in there, feel free to check out my written guide for each trial linked down in the description below. I've broken it down by role so you can focus on, say, you're a damage dealer. You can just look at what mechanics the damage dealer is going to encounter and which ones they need to be responsible for. But like I said, most likely your group's going to ignore 99% of the mechanics and they're just going to barrel through the trial anyway. On veteran, it's a completely different story. You have to obey the mechanics or else the group will absolutely die. Okay, so you're finally confident enough to jump into a trial, right? There's some incredibly powerful, incredibly fun gear that can be found in trials and you finally feel like, hey, maybe I can do this after all. Okay, so how do I jump into a trial group? Well, joining a trial group is actually quite simple. All you have to do is go to a zone called Craglorn. Every MMO has a place where people congregate to form trials, right? Unless they've added a raid finder to the game or a trial finder of some sort, right? 
there's always that place where the player base goes and congregates and looks for a group of people to run through a raid or a trial with. In Elder Scrolls Online, that zone is Craglorn. Everybody goes to Craglorn. So get yourself to Craglorn. A very popular place is the main town here called Belkarth down in the south. So we'll go to Belkarth and we'll show you what it's like to join a trial in Elder Scrolls Online via the pug group method. A pug group is simply a pickup group. It means it's a bunch of random people that just group together to take on this one piece of content and then they disperse again. Okay, so here we are and there's a ton of people already standing around the shrine, most likely looking for a group to run certain content with. If we look in the zone chat here, you can see that there's people creating groups already. The second we land in the group, creating a new group for veteran Hell Ross Citadel. So you would be looking for, if you're brand new to trials, an N at the beginning, which means normal. So normal Hell Ross Citadel or normal cloud rest ncr or normal sunspire nss right or if you're looking for rock grove that would be nrg that's how people talk in zone chat and then you have here a tank says looking for nss there's a little bit of a lingo involved and it's actually really simple if you don't know what it is there's lf which means looking for so if you're a damage dealer looking for a certain trial then you would just put dps or dd looking for and then the trial name which would be nss or normal sunspire you could type it all the way out or you could use the abbreviation like everybody else does it makes no difference they'll know what you mean one way or the other and likewise if you're a damage dealer you kind of have to be aggressive because there's a lot of damage dealers looking for these groups so when you see someone say i'm forming a group and we're looking for damage dealers you have to right click on their name or whisper them any way that you desire and then you just tell them hey i'm a dps looking for um whichever trial it is that they're forming a group for and they'll invite you assuming they have the room to do so. If it's a normal trial, they will almost 100% of the time invite you to the group. There's very little reason to deny someone access to your group for a normal trial run. You know, people aren't typically worried about being able to get through it. That's a given. Uh, so they'll invite the first, you know, 11 people that whisper them and get the group filled as fast as possible and move on with the group. So again, it's very simple to join a group to come here to Craglorn and to say, hey, I'm a damage dealer looking for Sunspire or to look for someone else creating a group. And they'll say, hey, we're looking for seven DPS right here. This person says, looking for more to do two more NSS runs for the day, need one healer, seven DPS. Come get your gear, new trial players, welcome. Look at that, perfect. I've only been in this zone for a few seconds and I've already seen multiple trials forming up. One of them is a normal Sunspire that's very welcoming. They're saying it right there and there you go. So jumping into trials is really easy. You just have to know how you just kind of have to understand the lingo. And I'll put a link in the description to a amazing video for Elder Scrolls Online lingo. It's going to give you all the acronyms and it breaks them down wonderfully. So if you're new to MMOs or if you're just new to Elder Scrolls Online, you should absolutely check that out after this video. There's one other way to jump into trials and that's to join a guild. I highly recommend joining guilds. I think that they can make the MMO experience 10 times what it otherwise would be. Elder Scrolls Online is a fantastic game to play by yourself. However, it can be a blast to jump into group content to run dungeons with a group of friends who are just like you. You know, they're coming home after work or school or on their day off and they just want to sit back and jump into a game that they love to play and laugh about it while talking to other people in comms or over chat. You know, I, I some of the most fun I have in this game is playing with people in my guilds or in other guilds that I've joined. If you're not in a guild yet, but you're looking to jump into a guild, then be sure to use the guild finder in game. It's a fantastic tool. You can click here, this arrow at the top and that's going to drop down a menu you can see all the guilds you're in as well as an option here guild finder click guild finder if you're not in any yet and then just click browse guilds and this breaks them down by type of guild so we've got trading if you want to trade right if you want to sell things in elder scrolls online to other players you need to be in a trading guild that has a guild trader this is the only way to list things for sale in this game so you'll want to be in at least one trading guild eventually not necessarily right away because it's going to be a while before you have enough things that are worth selling to be in a trading guild if you are in a trading guild you're going to be expected to sell things and to sell things fairly often because they have to bid for their spots so you know there is a cost associated with them having the guild trader they need to make some overhead off of your sales in order to keep being able to afford that guild trader so you know just one thing to know about guild traders and the trading system but to get back to the topic here you can also jump into a group pve guild role-playing guild social guilds pvp guilds questing and crafting right there's all types of guilds for all types of things join a few of them that are relevant to you and if right now you want to do trials then you're going to want to jump into some group pve guilds um you can check out their descriptions and they'll tell them hey we're new player friendly we're progressing through the game or you know or if they're more serious and they expect more out of their players 
you know, pick the one that's right for you. There's no wrong or right guilds. There's the one that's right for you. And if you join into a guild, remember, it's not marriage. You can leave the guild anytime you want. If you weren't really talking with them, if you weren't associating with them, or if you just weren't clicking with them, you know, they're not going to care if you leave. It's not going to hurt their feelings and it certainly shouldn't hurt yours. Eventually you'll find a guild, the people you click with. Now, don't expect to join a guild and have everyone reach out to you and say, hey, oh my gosh, it's you, you know, the person we've been waiting for. No, you're gonna have to put yourself out there. You're gonna have to say hi when you log in and you're gonna have to say, hey, does anyone wanna run a dungeon? And some days someone will say yes and some days nobody will respond at all because they're too busy killing mobs at the moment and they won't see your message. Don't take it personally. But that's the gist of guilds and how they can be associated with getting into trial groups. So jump in trial groups if you're more interested in doing more organized trials and progressing into veteran trials and veteran dlc trials then you absolutely got to get yourself into some guilds you can go to craglorn and pug normal trials however if you try to pug veteran trials it's a mixed bag of experiences a lot of times the groups won't be qualified they won't be ready they won't have the organization and the planning and it might be a fairly miserable experience uh, because nobody's running it you know nobody's coordinating things and nobody's making sure that everyone is ready for the content they're about to embark on and that's it guys hopefully after watching this video you feel encouraged to jump into at the very least normal trial content it's very approachable Zoss has made it very easy to do normal trials this is intentional they want you to be able to dip your feet into it to see it to try it they want everybody to be able to at least do the easiest version of the trials and to collect some really powerful gear while they're in there whether or not you continue on to veteran trials is totally up to you and if you don't want to that's totally fair you can still take that normal trial gear and do all of the solo content in the world that you enjoy if i failed to answer any questions you have about trials let me know down in the comments below and i'll be sure to answer any questions that you guys send my way as always if you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves ESO, be sure to swing by my twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe and like so that youtube knows to show it to more people finally i'd like to thank my youtube members for supporting the channel by becoming members to find out how to become a member of this channel and what the perks are click the join button below Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.